So a very predominant myth in the media is that crypto doesn't have any real value. Uh, but what exactly is value? So let's say that I am selling something and I set a price for that thing. And someone comes along and they offer to buy that thing at the price that we agree on. So we could say that the value of that thing is what we both agree upon. So really value comes down to four key elements. The first one is utility. So is that thing useful? Can people benefit from it? The next one is scarcity. So how much of there is it? How much exists of that thing? Uh, next is demand. So do people want this? And finally, it's transferability. So is it liquid, meaning uh, can I sell it? And when it comes to something like Bitcoin, so Bitcoin meets the criteria for all of these things. So firstly, Bitcoin is scarce, that's hard coded. There will only ever be 21 million of them. Uh, next, there's a lot of demand for Bitcoin. So with every uh, market cycle, every four year market cycle, we see more and more demand, uh, more activity on the network. Uh, Bitcoin is also one of the most liquid markets in the world. Uh, it trades 24 seven, 365. And finally, uh, Bitcoin has tremendous utility uh, in that you can transfer value across the internet. So all of these qualities give Bitcoin tremendous value. Now, when it comes to something like Ethereum, so Ethereum also meets the criteria for all of these things. Uh, and it's also uh, has a lot of utility. So we can look at something like, uh, like NFTs, for example, non-fungible tokens. And so NFTs unlock value for creators and artists. Now artists can monetize their work and go direct to their fans, right? Without going to like through a third party intermediary. We also have something like uh, like DeFi, decentralized finance. And this allows, uh, you know, financial services and products to people that may be unbanked or don't have access to, you know, to traditional banking. And then finally, uh, stable coins is, is another common use case. And with stable coins, it allows for faster and cheaper payments uh, across, you know, like cross borders. So let's say like you know, migrant workers, for example, want to send uh, home at US dollars, uh, it's much cheaper and much faster for them. So as we know, in 1971, President Nixon uh, took the US off of the gold standard. And at that point, um, it, like, the dollar wasn't backed by anything other than the faith of the citizens in the government to maintain the value uh, of the currency and not uh, inflate it. If you look back through history, uh, governments uh, don't really have a great track record when it comes to maintaining the value of their currencies. There's many uh, instances of even hyperinflation. So now when we circle back to something like Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin is not controlled by any government. Uh, its um, issuance is not coming from a central bank. Uh, it's completely decentralized. The scarcity is hard coded into it. So we, you know, we know the issuance, we know what it's gonna be in the future. Uh, and it does not require any faith or trust at all. So all of these qualities make Bitcoin and crypto in general uh, very valuable.